Now I gave my students this task to find the 95% confidence interval that contains the true proportion of students that prefer TikTok. So they created a survey, they collected 56 pieces of data and came up with these results. So we've got an X, the number of people that like TikTok, you'll see those in green. We found 20 of those out of 56 total. From this information, we can put together the sample proportion. We call that sample proportion P hat, and it sounds kind of complicated, but it's actually just a fraction. It's favorable, so it's the TikTok people out of the total, 20 out of 56. Write that as a decimal, 0 0.3571. And this decimal is gonna become our point estimate. We're gonna use this to estimate the population proportion. And we can also, of course, 0.3571 isn't incredibly meaningful, but we can say for our sample that P hat is 35.7%. Okay, so how does this help us come up with our confidence interval for the actual, that population proportion? Well, we're gonna start by building it with our population proportion here. We don't know what it is, so we're gonna use our sample proportion to estimate that. So that was just for our sample. We could have gone out and sampled lots of different groups of 56 students. So this point estimate isn't enough. We're gonna stretch that out into an interval. And we want this interval to cover a 95% area. Okay, so P is between what and what is really what we're coming up with. So the normal curve would be really helpful here, but we first need to verify that our data is normally distributed and can we actually use Z? Well, for that to be true, we need to have a big enough spread. So we're gonna make sure that our variance, N times P times Q, N P hat Q hat, which is the same as N times P hat, Q hat is just one minus P hat. That variance is greater than 10. Let's go ahead and put our numbers in. I threw that into my calculator and I came up with 12.855. So I can go ahead and use the Z statistic. Now I've got my formula, but I really don't want Z equals. I'm not solving for Z. I'm solving for one of those limits. We're gonna start with the upper limit. In the formula, I wanna get the question mark all by itself. So I wanna cross multiply by that denominator. I'm gonna move this up out of the way and we end up with Z times the square root quantity is equal to question mark the upper limit minus P hat. I just wanna add P hat to both sides and we end up with the formula for that question mark which is our upper limit. So we're gonna replace it in our inequality. Didn't fit below my graph, so I'm gonna leave a question mark there, but I was able to put it up there in my inequality. Now we also need the lower limit, the proportion on the left-hand side. Its formula is almost identical. The only difference is that it has a negative Z since it's on the left. So I can put this in for that lower limit. Again, I'm not gonna squish it underneath my curve, but let's go ahead and put it into our inequality. This is the inequality then that we're gonna be working with. We're actually gonna start by looking at what I've got highlighted here. This is my margin of error. So this is how I go from my point estimate to my lower limit and from my point estimate to my upper limit. Notice it starts with a Z. So we need to figure out what our Z is. To do that, I know I've got a 95% confidence interval, depending on the table that you use, or if you're looking it up in a calculator, you might need instead, not the middle area of 95%, but the area in the tails, we call that alpha, which is 5%, 100 minus 95. So the area in the tails together is 5%, but they're split into two tails. Again, this is just so you can use whatever table you've got and the area in an individual tail alpha divided by two is 2.5%. And that's why in a lot of these formulas, you'll see Z labeled as Z alpha over two. So I've got my table here and my table is super nice because it's got everything that I need. It's got the confidence interval of 95%. And you'll notice right underneath there, it also has the 0.025 for a single tail and 0.05 for two tails. 
Now this is actually a T distribution. I know we're using a Z distribution. So if I scroll all the way down on my table, the Zs are right here on the very bottom. I am in the third row over. So I've got a Z statistic of 1.96. Let's put that back into our formula. So I'm ready to compute the margin of error. Now I think I've got everything that I need. Let's bring our sample data back up. So we've got our N and our P hat. And I'm gonna bring that formula down, the highlighted formula down, so we can plug in all of our values. So the Z, the P hat, and the N, give me this. I just put all of that into my calculator and I ended up with a margin of error of 0.1255. So that margin of error, again, gets me from my sample proportion, my point estimate, to both the lower limit and the upper limit. Let's put that into our formula. So I've got p hat plus and minus 0.1255. p hat, remember, was that 0.357. That goes into the formula and subtracting and adding those values, we've got our confidence interval. We can also read this as the point estimate, 0.357, plus or minus that margin of error. We have our answer kind of, sort of, but our answer isn't just this inequality or just the diagram that we've got here. We can rewrite this in percentages. I think that might be a little more meaningful, but how do we state our conclusion? I'm gonna show you a really common way to state that conclusion, and then I'm gonna tell you exactly what that means. We're gonna state that with 95% confidence, the population proportion is between those two values, 0.232 and 0.483. But what does 95% confidence actually mean? Remember, this was just one sample of many that we could have taken. If we were to build confidence intervals for every single one of those, 95% of them would contain the true proportion. I encourage you to learn more about confidence intervals and the calculator. Take a look at these.